Hi everyone, we now learn about inverse normal distributions. Now throughout this tutorial, we're going to be working with a continuous random variable, which I'll call capital X, which follows a normal distribution whose mean is 88 and standard deviation is 19, which would mean that its variance is 19 squared. Now to fully understand the inverse normal distribution, I'd like to start by highlighting how it differs or what makes it different from the normal distribution. And for that, I've drawn two identical bell curves here. And on the one on the left, I'll remind us of what we did with the normal distribution. So I'll just write normal. And I'll use the one on the right hand side to show what we use the inverse normal distribution for. So I'll just write inverse normal. We were calculating probabilities, and each of those probabilities corresponded to an area under the bell curve. A typical example of that could be, we're given a value of x, say x equals to 65, and we need to find the probability that x be less than or equal to 65. And on the bell curve, that corresponds to the area that I'm highlighting right now. So that area is the probability that x be less than or equal to 65. Then with our calculators, we'd use the cumulative distribution function, which we saw is often called norm CDF, and we'd input the value of x. So I'll just write capital F of the value of x, which is 65, as well as the parameters of our normal distribution. So those would be the mean, which is 88, and the standard deviation, which is 19. Entering all of those values into our calculator leads to 0 0.113039. And rounding to three significant figures, that's 0 0.113. So we could state that the probability is equal to 0 0.113, which is equal to this green area under the bell curve. And that's essentially what we used the normal distribution for. On the other hand, we'll use the inverse normal distribution function to calculate values of x given a probability. In other words, given an area under the curve. So for example, we may be told that the probability that the continuous random variable capital X be smaller than K is 0.2. And we'd then be asked to find K. Well, on our bell curve, the probability of 0.2 would correspond to this area I'm shading right now. So that's 0.2. And our task is to find the value which we're calling K of the continuous random variable. So before I go ahead and calculate what k is, let me just spend a second to clearly distinguish these two problems. When working with the normal distribution function, we're calculating the probability that x be less than or equal to some value, and that value will be given in the question. In this case, it was 65. In other words, in this scenario, we're given a value of x, and we're calculating an area under the curve. With the inverse normal, on the other hand, we're given an area under the curve and we need to find the corresponding value of x, which I've called k here. To find this value k, all we have to do is use the inverse normal distribution function, which we'll usually call capital F of negative 1, as in inverse function. And the input value for this function is the probability that we're given, which in turn corresponds to the area under the bell curve. So that would be 0.2. And on top of that, this function takes two parameters, which are the mean of the normal distribution, so in this case that's 88, as well as the standard deviation, which is 19. Now on our calculators, this function is known as the inverse norm, and is usually written INV as in inverse, capital N-O-R-M, as in inverse normal. And when we use this with our calculator, we need to plug in exactly the same values that I have here. In other words, we need to enter inverse norm of the area 0.2 with the mean 88 and standard deviation 19. And in doing so, using our calculators, we find that that's equal to 72.0092. And rounding that to three significant figures, we find that's equal to 72.0. And I would like to point out that either of these two notations would be perfectly acceptable in an exam, which is why I'm using them both here. Okay, so the value of k is 72. Done. Let's look at another question, still involving the inverse normal, for our continuous random variable, capital X. And for that, I'll quickly draw a third bell curve, so I'll do that here. Let's see. We have a vertical axis, our horizontal axis, x, 
and our bell curve. There we go. And the mean was 88. Okay, and let me quickly scribble down a question. All right, we're told that the probability that capital X, that's the continuous random variable, be greater than some value Q is 0 0.25. And we're asked to find the value of Q. Now in this case, this probability of 0 0.25 is the probability that x be greater than this number q. And the words greater than tell us that we're dealing with the right-hand side of the bell curve. And on the bell curve, that area would correspond to this right tail that I'm drawing right now. And the value q that we're trying to find would be this value here on the x-axis. So what we're dealing with here is this area, 0 0.25, and we need to find the corresponding value q. Now this example brings me to a very important fact when we're using the inverse normal function. And that is that the inverse normal function can only work with left tails on the bell curve. Now since this green area we have here corresponds to a right tail, we need to turn this into a left tail problem, and for that we're going to consider the rest of the area under the bell curve. Here's what I mean, rather than working with that green area, we're going to work with this yellow area that I'm hatching right now. And since the total area under the bell curve is equal to 1, it doesn't take us long to see that the yellow area we have here will be 0 0.75. And this yellow area is definitely a left tail, so we can use the inverse normal distribution function. And in doing so, we'll obtain the value of q. So let's go ahead. If we use the inverse normal function, and I'll just write inverse of f, with input value 0 0.75, and parameters the mean, which is 88, and standard deviation, which is 19, we find, using our calculators, that that's equal to 100.815. And so rounding to three significant figures, we find that that's equal to 101. And we could add that to our bell curve here. We can state that Q is equal to 101. Do make a note of this second example. In particular, make a note of the fact that we have to use the left-hand side of the graph here. And to stress that further, you can go ahead and check for yourselves, but had we used the inverse normal function with an input value of 0 0.25, then what our calculators would understand from that can be illustrated in the following quick sketch. So if I quickly draw one last bell curve, something looking like this, with our mean mu, which equals to 88, had we plugged in the input value of 0 0.25, our calculators would be considering this lower portion of the curve, whose area is 0 0.25. And in doing so, the value of x that our calculator would give us would be 75, which is very different from the correct answer we have here, 101. And there we have it. That's the end of our first tutorial on how to use the inverse normal distribution function.